Thank you so much. Um, the other day I worked out that it's probably close to a decade ago that I was invited by Linda Chase to be part of a one to watch slot as poets and players. And now I've arrived in what, at least when I was um, on the board of poets and players, was the new voices slot, which raises the question of what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, to which Viv pointed out that one of the things is that I've had kids, um, and they're actually in the audience today, hearing me for the first time, so I just want to say hello to them. Um, right, and now to the poetry. Um, I've, I'm going to start with some translations. I have been translating the poetry of Nelly Zacks. Um, Google did it sounds so weird to say it when I practiced it. Uh, Google did a doodle um, just before Christmas to celebrate Nelly Zax's birthday. Um, and something that became clear to me uh, when that happened was actually that she really still isn't particularly well known, or at least not as well known as she should be. Um, it's a big year for translation from German. There's a big uh, Brecht translation coming out. Um, and uh, so um, I thought I'd draw some attention to her as well. Uh, Nelly Zacks was born in Berlin. Um, she, uh, she's a Jewish writer. She was forced to flee in 1940 uh, and found refuge in Sweden where she was for the rest of her life. Um, I'm going to keep my phone here to come over time. Okay, I'm going to start in German and finish in German and then some English translations in between. So kurz ausgeliefert ist der Mensch, wer kann da über Liebe sprechen? Das Meer hat längere Worte, auch die kristallgefächerte Erde mit weißsagendem Wuchs, dieses leidende Papier schon krank vom Staub zum Staubelied, das gesegnete Wort entführend, vielleicht zurück zu seinem magnetischen Punkt, der Gott durchlässig ist. So briefly delivered as humankind, how can anyone talk about love? The sea has longer words, so does the crystal fanned earth with its prophetic growth. This suffering paper, already sick from the dust to dust song, carrying away the blessed word, perhaps returned to its magnetic point, which lets God through. Every country is ready to rise up from the map, to slough its starry skin, sling the bundled blue of its seas over one shoulder. Mountains with fiery roots stooped as caps onto its smoldering hair, ready to carry the heart's last longings in its suitcase, like the butterfly pupa on whose wings they'll end this journey one day. I'm searching for my right to roots through this geography of countries at night where arms open to love hang crucified along the lines of latitude, fathomless in expectation. Ich bin meinem Heimatrecht auf der Spur, dieser Geografie nächtlicher Länder, wo die zur Liebe geöffneten Arme gekreuzigt an den Breitengraben hängen, bodenlos in Erwartung. The next, um, the rest of what I'm reading is from the, the new pamphlet, Scotland's Progress. Um, I think the best thing for me to do is just to launch into it. Um, A Skeleton's Progress 1. Skeleton Man, sunlight passes through you. You prop your elbow on the counter, instructions clamped between your fingers. At first, the tattooist will not touch you. It feels too permanent, even for this old structure. You hang your head from the stalk of your neck. 
There are other ways of talking. Skeleton man, does it hurt? Lamplight passes through you. It dusts the counter like antler velvet. From the drill tip, tissue modes burr into the air, making the light shift. You grin, you bare your teeth. Four. As a child, skeleton man, I remember how you felt the presence under the Christmas tree and broke a glass sphere in its wrapper. You pressed too hard. When you shook, it rasped. Who gives something so fragile to a young skeleton? Always, they confront you with impossible situations. I remember, skeleton man, the next day your milk teeth dropped out all at once. With the money left under your pillow, you replaced the present. You needn't have. It was yours to break. Skeleton Man. I found a black and white photograph of you as an infant in an old fashioned perambulator. You're parked next to a sapling, somehow familiar, and a sliver of arm reaches for one of its tendrils. Left to your own devices, the picture is taken almost in passing. Skeleton Man. They don't need to have their hand on that old contraption. They don't need to use the deep mechanical lull of the suspension to ride you to sleep. Why would they, when you never cry? You're a good baby, best baby, skeleton baby. Skeleton feelings. Skeleton man, where do feelings come from? Here you are, where you think no one watches reaching down under your rib cage and back up past false ribs towards true to make a fist where a heart should be. Skeleton man, this muscle click clacks when it should boom, grinds when it should murmur. This is no center for your pain, but take it away and I say something real remains, hand on heart. get to the end, I feel like I should offer some kind of explanation of what's going on here. Uh, and for anyone who's wondering, I'm going to carry, I'm going to carry on as I've started. Um, really, these were written in a very busy time. Um, and when life is busy and you have to write into just the kind of small windows that it offers you, it's good to have something that's sort of ready to go and you don't have to think about too much. Um, some questions were already answered, how long it's going to be, who's involved, and also the figure of the skeleton man kept coming back as well, um, often after long absences, uh, it kept demanding to be written again, and by the end I sort of imagined it kind of like a comic strip, but a poem version of it, um, with all that entails, I was able to kind of send him to the end of the earth, fire him on a rocket into space, uh, but in the next scene, have him back to exactly where he was. So I'm just going to read a few more now. Um, skeleton man digging in a post diluvian park, coaxing worms to your fingers. They hang there like rifled cigarettes of skin, stiffening into hooks as they scent the air for earthly purchase. You grant it placing the first to your chest like a buttonhole flower. O oh, walking bait shop. Worms are ranged like kippers in a smokehouse along every rib and from the lip of your every socket. From a distance, you're wearing a heavy lumpen coat, a pelt that even as it sheds itself, reveals you for the first time to the eyes of robin, blackbird, and crow. Skeleton man, the eel is a dead weight on the aquarium floor. It lies there in the dark with the integrity of a draft excluder. The marabou, skeleton man, is scrimmage of plumage and skin, halfway house of hair and feather. I wonder, which is the animal you like most, 
which is the animal most like you? My last one is the, the only one I think of is the kind of a Manchester poem in here. Um, it could be any city, um, but it is me. Um, and just to say thank you very much for listening. Skeleton man, you know a skeleton when you see one. And this city has rivers for bones. Some rise out from under its skin of road and railway line in fractured glimpses, hemmed into short corner, brick-locked into their courses. Others, skeleton man, are buried deep, surface only in the names of streets. If one broke, you wonder, how would we know, other than too late? Thank you very much.